Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to another e-Institute webinar. Today, we are launching the Inclusive Cities webinar series, which covers topics around the complex problems of slums, which represent more than a billion people in the world today. The Inclusive Cities series aims to disseminate lessons from international experience on upgrading informal settlements, largely drawing from the recent initiative between WBI, Cities Alliance, UN Habitat, German International Cooperation, and IDB, which aims to document, analyze, and disseminate the lessons from national policies and programs in 15 countries to better understand what worked, what did not, and why, in terms of scaling up slum upgrading and prevention. This morning, we kick things off by exploring the experience of Brazil, which has emerged as one of the successful large-scale practices in the area of addressing informal settlements. Today, we're lucky to have Alessandra de Avila Vieira from the Ministry of Cities. Let me briefly introduce her. Alessandra, an architect and urban planner, is currently the project manager of PAC Favela, Brazil's national slum upgrading program. Before joining the ministry in 2007, she had been working in local governments and NGOs in the field of urban planning, focusing on urban regeneration and housing. She graduated at the University of Sao Paulo and earned her master's degree in housing planning at the Technological Research Institute of Sao Paulo. Today, Alessandra will be going through the slum situation in Brazil and the evolution of government's response to the issue. She will be covering two important items. One, policy and institutional reforms, including the creation of the Ministry of Cities and a national housing policy. And two, Brazil's two-track approach to informal settlements and housing. Hi everyone, I'm really glad to be here. So I'm going to start my presentation because I have uh, just a few minutes to talk a large, large subject. Well, for those who doesn't, didn't have the, the joy to know my country, uh, Brazil is a 190 million inhabitants a country and it's really big with 26 states and it has over 50,000, 5,000, sorry, uh, municipalities. And we have uh, a difference between all other federations that the municipalities has um, its uh, uh, end itself. So it has responsibilities and it has election governments and it's independent from the union and from the, from the federal government and from the state government. Uh, we had a really, really fast uh, uh, urban growth and uh, inhabitant growth. So it, it brought us uh, with a, a slow response from the states for this urbanization. So it brought us a lot of uh, problems. The ones that we call the urban passive. So now we have a housing deficit of over 5 million households. We have over 3 million households in slums and we have around 11 million households with lack of urban service and infrastructure. And we st and we're still growing, so we're still making problems. So it's a big challenge for the states how to solve and how to make the urban quality better. Uh, in 2003, uh, the go federal government decided to create the Ministry of Cities. So we have an institutional to deal with the housing, the sanitation, the mobility, and all the planning uh, programs uh, financed by the gov federal government that created systems for each one of these, uh, these policies. So the Ministry of Cities were, were created in 2003 with the main goals to regain and assert the state's ability to formulate and manage urban development policies. That's the, uh, the strategic goal of the Ministry of Cities. But in order to do that in a democratic way, it was cre also created uh, the Council of Cities. So it was created in 2004 it had the participation of the, the society, the 
the government so with 86 members with voice and votes of various social segments segments that are elected at national conferences so we organized conferences that go from the municipality to the states to the federal to decide which programs and how do we plan our cities and in the uh, in the ministry of cities we have the secretary of national housing the national house secretary that is responsible for the national housing policy that has five strategic goals to deal with the housing problem in, in the country so the, the the main points are to maintain investment level in upgrading and tenure regularization and to do tenure regularization we have to have a lot of that investments in urbanization in upgrading in infrastructure uh, we have to guarantee investments in urban lands in order to deliver new housing units to the lower income class so we prevent to do to create new slums and to support municipalities to develop housing planning and instrument instruments and to manage local territory we finance housing plan housing local plans for and we do some uh, technical assistance to the uh, municipalities and the states to deal with the planning of housing to modernize and cheapen civ uh, civil construction and to provide new housing alternatives linked to other social and income generation policies. The two main investment programs in Brazil are the PAC Islam Upgrading and My House, My Life program. They are dealing with the two biggest problems. One is to upgrade slums and to deal with the, uh, our passive and the other one is to deal with our housing backlog so we prevent new slums uh, we have we we define them differently because uh, we don't think that only building houses is going to solve the problem so we have to deal with the, the the problem that are already started in the in our cities the growth acceleration program is a bigger pro program in brazil that deal with all the infrastructure problems like uh, like the uh, energetic infrastructure uh, logistical infrastructure and it was a decision of the federal government to include in this program social and urban infrastructure so uh, all the sanitation and housing uh, investments are in, in in the growth acceleration program Well, we have here, uh, uh, as our Islam definition, uh, for us it's urban territories with varying dimensions and typologies inhabited by low-income families and characterized by the presence of shortages and inadequacies. It was emerged as an alternative housing made by low-income people who occupy territories environmentally fragile, fragile without interest to the formal markets. So we didn't have a market that could support, that could uh, receive uh, the low-income class. So they started to occupy the, 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 the urban territories that wasn't uh, attracted, attracted to the market. So we don't consider only Islams uh, as, uh, as, uh, as we, we know like they are really dense and they occupied the, the, the environmental problems. We have uh, two irregular settlements of low-income dwellers. We have tenement houses, especially in urban centers, especially in the big cities like Sao Paulo, like Rio de Janeiro. And we still have a problem that in the 70s, we had a big uh, institutional for housing uh, construct for the low income and for the middle class and now it's the the these uh, projects are degraded and we also consider this a type of slums that the uh, federal government can invest to uh, improve the quality of life of people so here in brazil we had a, hist a history of interventions in slum 
And until the 70s, we believed that eradication of slums were the solution. So we would eradicate that piece of territory and would bring this to new housing projects that now we are having, we are considering slums as well. So in the 80s and in the 90s, we kind of uh, begin to understand that uh, removing this population was not a solution, especially because of the scale, the proportion it was getting in the, in the country. So we started to partial and gradual upgrading, especially because we didn't have at that time uh, the capacity of big investments. So in the 2000s, we, we started a, a complete and integrated upgrading with uh, a program that we called Habitat Brasil, and it had uh, international financing. So the, fe the federal government incorporates Islam upgrading as an axis of housing po po policy. So we finally understand that the scale of the problem no longer involves the removal of all families for housing projects. And here are some examples in Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo. One is Rocinha, one of our most famous slums. And in, the, in our concept, we have two main questions. The one is to complete. The, uh, the upgrading has to be complete. It's configuring a polygonal where we run all works and services necessary for the elevation of the urban and housing conditions of the settlement. Today, we have uh, some of our biggest slums. We know that we can deal with all problems at the same time. So we start to uh, do it in levels, what we call gradual uh, upgrading. So we start with uh, the, the urban, the mobility, and the sanitation, biggest problems. And then we're going with uh, new interventions that uh, uh, eventually will come to the housing. So we would finance the, the, the improvement of that house or new houses. And it has to be integrated uh, as well. Uh, we have uh, components as urban, uh, urban issues, housing, land, social, and environmental. So it's most um, basically five components. It has to have urban integration, especially with mobility, especially with the access of the public services to that territory and how this territory is connected to the rest of the city. So it's not, uh, an, uh, it's not uh, we have to adjust the road system, we have to, co to construct public facilities, so it, it, it's part of the city. And we have the housing. In the Islamic region, the housing is for, uh, it's, uh, it's to help uh, implement the infrastructure and the urban integration. So if you, ha you have to, to open a road, you have to take these people out and do housing. It's not like we take these lumps off and come back with housing. It's just the minimal possible and it's normally around 30% of the population that has to be uh, removed and resettled uh, in the same place or in a place nearby so the infrastructure can be implemented. We have land adjustments, so we can do the tenue regularization, so we can assure the people uh, that, that we can assure that they are not going to be evicted. So this land is theirs, and sometimes these Islams are there for like 40, 50 years. Sometimes it's generations living in the same land that doesn't have regularization. We have the environmental company the components. As we said, uh, most of the territories that were occupied were fragile, environmental fragile. So some of them we cannot uh, maintain there. So we would put in the in a in a place nearby so we can uh, recovery uh, do ambiental recovery like in rivers and in mountains. And we have what we call uh, the, the axis of sustainability of the intervention, that is social work. We have to all the time be dialoguing with this, uh, the community and to approve and uh, uh, know what the expectation about the problems are. So the social work is the axis that uh, guarantees the success or the failure of an intervention.
And here is just an example of our biggest Islam upgrading now uh, that is in, a, in, a, in, a, in Sao Paulo. So it's over 45,000 families benefited and it's around, it's over $500 million invested. And it's, uh, uh, it's around 60%, it starts in 2007, and it's around 60% of the works uh, are done. And we are seeing now how, when it's done, to complete and uh, improve and enlarge this uh, Islam that now here in this uh, waterfall, in these dams, Billy, in these dams, sorry, we have around a, almost two, two million persons living, living there. So uh, the PAC main challenges, oh, so the Islam of grading main challenge are to maintain current levels of investments. It's not cheap and it's not easy to do because it's all public work, so we have to do licitation. It's not uh, the federal government that do the works, it's the uh, municipalities or the states. We just finance and do the guidelines and do in monitoring the investments. So uh, the sustainability after the conclusion of interventions is also a challenge. Uh, even though we have the social work as a, a guideline, as a, a special component, we know that sometimes it's, do, it's do done better or worse, so uh, some municipalities doesn't always uh, talk to the, the, the communities as well as think it should be done. So the sustainability is still a, a challenge for us. And to integrate other public policies in the territory, such as public safety, education, health, and social care, to structuring a technical assistance system to stakeholders and to the families, Especially because in our municipalities, as we've shown, uh, it's, we have uh, really unequal. We have municipalities with 10 million uh, people and we have municipalities with 5,000 people. So their institutional development is really uneven. So we have, for that and for all these challenges, we have to improve our regulatory frameworks all the time. It's a, a, a non-stop working. So this was the PAC Islam upgrading so we can deal with uh, the, the, the problem that are already installed. So not to have more, uh, more Islams, more problems, we, the, the, in 2009 especially, uh, the government decided to uh, give, uh, uh, to give the, the housing construction another, to take it to another level. So uh, it launched the My House, My Life program that has a goal to do 3 million, uh, 3 million houses in, since 2009 to 2014. And it's uh, uh, seven, uh, seven, 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 two 7.6 billion in subsidies so it can reach the lower, fam the lower income families. So it's made by a set of instruments for meeting the different incoming classes housing needs. So it's increasing opportunities for accessible housing. It's generating employment through investments in the construction industry. It's important to notice that it was, uh, it was, it was done in our uh, in a world crisis. So it for us wasn't only a housing problem, but it was an economic problem. It was the government giving uh, incentives so the uh, constructions would start generating employers. So my house, my life guidelines uh, is basically three. It's a broad, of set, uh, it's broad set of instruments in order to reach all income levels. So it comes to, to go from zero minimum wage to 10 minimum wage. So it has a... Uh, 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 levels of subsidies in all these types, so it uh, incentives the market to work in all the classes, in all the income classes. And it has strategy, uh, strategies from National Housing Plan, uh, plan. it's distribution of resources, housing units according to the state's housing deficit, 
uh, regionalization of the costs of the dwelling. We have a really different uh, states of uh, urban and economic development in our regions in Brazil, especially in Southeast. We, and we incentives the counterparts of states and municipalities so it can potentialize this program. It's organized in modalities based on combination of families income level, organizer agents, and size populations, and with or without subsidies and urban and rural, rural areas. So actually, we have nine modalities in type of constructions for this. So it's, uh, we have the urban, the urban program and the rural program. In this, we have the stratification of the income uh, of the level of incomes. In this, we have difference in, in each uh, in each incomes, and in rural and in rural, we have different organizer agents. So it can be construction companies, it can be entities, it can be governments, or it, even in, for the highest incomes, it can be the individual go and have a, fina a subsided financing, but not all subsided. Uh, not all subsided the house. So we have actually, uh, we have the resources to do it and the instruments. The resources to do it, it's basically two. It's the federal budget that goes uh, directly onto uh, funds that can operate this in a more flexible way that if it's direct uh, directly in the in the budget, uh, it go. It has to go to a municipality or to a, uh, a state, and we have uh, the the employee severance guarantee fund. Fund that is a, a it's the savings of the the people who has formal in, formal employ, and it, it saves a little uh, so, uh, five, uh, around twenty percent. So it can be the the country can invest. In, in housing and the people who can access this fund is not only the ones that are informal employees but the ones that are informal too and we have instruments especially from a, a special taxation regime, regime so we can uh, reduce the, the, the cost of the, the final product for the house and especially uh, one of the instruments that are with this, all these uh, designs of subsided is that well, we have a lot of instruments, so the house will cost less. But the final project, the final project, it's, it goes, uh, the way that we subside it to the family is based on the income of the family. So it's two different things. How much it costs is one thing, so we have a lot of instruments to, to low it down, but the family pays how she can pay. So it's uh, for the one to three minimum wages, we're talking about uh, 20, uh, five percent of her income or 25 reais that are like ten dollars a month to the, the financing of this housing. So from one, the, the first program had the, the goal of one million houses and the second phase of the program, two million houses. From the one to two, we already saw a lot of uh, adjustments that we could make in the program. So we had uh, more, uh, more goals into the zero to three uh, minimum wages. So uh, the, the subsidies of the government improved. So increase of lower income homes delivery go from 40% to 60%. It had an improvement of financing concessions rules. The empowerment of women heads of families in contract signing. We had to change the law so we could do that. We have the improvement of technical norms and of beneficiary selection progress. And closer partnership with local governments. This one, the, 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 this is the, the most important one, I think, because uh, the once, once they put the project in a city, if the, the municipality is not participating, it's participating so it can do the urban maintenance, 
and it can provide the, the public equipment. So the, this housing problems is going to be have a, a problem in the future. So now we have uh, two over two million uh, units contracted. It's over a seven to one billion dollars investments, and we already delivered over a million houses. So uh, we we uh, these million houses, most of them are in the the lower income classes, and we have some examples here, like uh, in Rio de Janeiro, in Campo Grande, and in Bahia, of types of uh, housing projects that are being produced by my house, my life. Well, my house, my life has its challenges too. So the, the, the ones that are most important for us is to improve design and building quality in order to minimize condominium maintenance costs because the, the financing is totally subsided, but when the family goes into the, uh, into the project, into a house, it, it was most of them came from an informality situation, so it starts to pay uh, water, it starts to pay light, it starts to pay uh, condominium maintenance. So we have to we have to have a, a, a generation act a actions with these families, uh, uh, income actions, so it can improve their income, so they can support the uh, uh, live in a, a formal house. And we have to improve urban location because it's a scale program. All scale programs has this problem to. Uh, the, the costs of the, the land is uh, 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 a main uh, a main guide to the where these these projects are gonna be implemented. So we have to to, to make some uh, some regulation some regulation so it is not it's not put really outside the city without uh, urban uh, urban services without public and community facilities. Uh, we have to increase participation of local governments. As I said, uh, we had an improvement to second phase, but we still have a lot of uh, a lot to do in terms of the the the, com uh, the compromising of the the, the, the local uh, interests to these house programs. We have to attract new partners to the low-income real estate financing markets, especially to decrease the the, the level of subsidies the government has to put in this program. We have to optimize participation of government hires, social movements, and community-based organizations in the housing programs. And we have to institutional strengthening of the Ministry of CEDAR in, or, in order to undertake follow-up and monitoring actions. So uh, even it's a program that it's based on the market to incentive the market, the efforts of the states, the states to do the project as we consider it social uh, adequate uh, has to have a, 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 a strong institution to do all the framework, to do all the monitoring and to all the time have to improve the program so it can uh, actually uh, achieve its goals. So thank you. This was, thank you for listening. This was the thing that I was uh, that I had to say in a few minutes. It's about two uh, big problems and uh, two big problems and a big problem in Brazil. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Alessandra, for the very interesting and. Informative presentation and thank you for the very succinct uh, presentation. Um, now I'd like to briefly at this point uh, introduce our discussant, um, Andre Herzog. Andre is a senior urban specialist at the World Bank Institute's urban team. He is actually currently the one in charge of coordinating the Inclusive Cities program, which I br briefly mentioned earlier. Uh, Andre, now can we please hear your comments? Yes, thank you very much, Jay, and hello, everyone. Uh, 
Thank you very much, Alessandra. I'm here connected from Maputo in Mozambique. It's really a pleasure to be part of this uh, webinar. And uh, as Jay was saying, uh, uh, we have an inclusive seats program, and this is the first uh, webinar of a series of case studies that we have documented on scaling up slum upgrading prevention through national policy and program. Uh, I would like to first say that uh, the experience of the experience of Brazil, the the very first important lesson is really about a lot of things that uh, didn't go right. Uh, as Alessandra starts saying, uh, Brazil today has an enormous stock of uh, slums and a housing debt uh, about 5 million households. And that's the result of the failed policies uh, and, and the failure of the housing market for many, many years when cities in Brazil was starting to grow, it started to grow very fast. And the urban poor had no option uh, uh, in the formal market or in government programs or, or had bad options. And that's the result. So now Brazil, as you saw, has uh, have to spend billions and billions of dollars. I saw some of the comments that were already popping up of people really uh, uh, surprised by the amount of resources now being spent. And we know in the bank that uh, upgrading can cost uh, more than four times the cost of preventive measures. Of, of guiding uh, urban development in an early phase. So I think that's a very important lesson uh, that we learn uh, looking at the experience of Brazil. The importance of uh, intervening uh, on uh, the issue of informal settlement right from the beginning. Um, the second thing that uh, I want to say is that uh, um, as Alessandra showed, that's really important. Brazil was only able to scale up to the size that we, we saw uh, from the Alessandra presentation because it developed uh, a very robust and sophisticated policy institutional environment. Several important policy reforms uh, Alessandra mentioned, such as the, 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 the approval of the uh, Statute of Cities, the creation of the Ministry of Cities, the, the establishment of the City Council, um, uh, uh, and the establishment of a national housing finance system. That's really important. That really gives the institutional and policy uh, framework for the two programs, the, the PAC uh, Favela the, uh, and the My House and My Life. The, uh, Third point that uh, I, I want to say, again, it's uh, on the finance. Uh, Alessandra show how the government uh, can, uh, intervene in creating uh, a, a, a very large pool of resources uh, to finance the two programs. And how the government intervene in the housing finance market to bring the market downwards. Uh, both in terms of demand subsidies and supply subsidies. The combination of the two in a, uh, in a very uh, uh, smart way. Um, but I want to, to leave to, to Alessandra and, and to, for discussion two, uh, I think, three points that uh, uh, she mentioned uh, in terms of challenge. Is that when you move to scale as Brazil did, you, you, your focus, the focus of the government, is on, on quantity. And as Alessandra said, now the issue is quality. So how you really can uh, deliver uh, quantity, but also with quality. So that's my first point for this. The second, of course, the issue about sustainability. Um, 
uh, when you, you, you uh, uh, finance infrastructure, you, you, you transfer resources to finance infrastructure, the local governments will be, be then responsible for maintaining that infrastructure. So how this equation is sorted out. And uh, last, uh, that she didn't mention, but we, we saw that land prices are going up and acquisition of land starting to become very challenging and how it's affecting uh, the program. So that's my contribution. And again, uh, congratulations, Alessandra. It was really uh, very interesting and very important uh, experience for all of us. Thank you. OK. okay. Uh I'm going to start uh, quickly on the, the questions of Andrea, and then I go to some questions that are being uh, written here. Uh, Andrea, I think that the... about quality and the, the land price are really uh, are really together so uh, why because the land price uh, if we don't control it we are we are doomed to send this population far away so when we 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 send this population far away we have uh, all kind of deficits of uh, public services so the the control of the the, the land price is the, the main issue now that we're dealing but here in brazil we have a, a, a particularity uh, someone here asked it that uh, if it uh, who owned the, the land we have a private market it's not uh, it's not like in mozambique that the, the land is from the government so we have to deal with the market and we have like a statue of cities uh, to have instruments so we can kind of control the, 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 the kind of control the prices but uh, it is a, a, a municipality matter constitutionally so he, in, in federal government we can't uh, decide what, where, what instruments are going to be applied in the, the, the land uh, control prices. So if the municip so we have to act uh, with the municipalities. So the municipalities will do this control and will do like uh, where, what we call is a housing, uh, in a social interest in housing zones. So it is gonna reserve uh, areas of the city for housing projects. So to do that, it's the municipality has had to do it. So we, in federal government, uh, we have these two things. We are investing a lot in the construction, and it has this problem that is going to the price of the land. If, if the municip municipality doesn't act on the price of the land, we can compromise the construction. So that's why all the time we talked, uh, I talked, we can't act without the municipality because the urban uh, planning and the urban, uh, the urban territory, it's a matter of municipality constitutionally here in Brazil. So the quality, I think it's uh, linked to that. So not only it's going to be uh, in the city, in a better place in the city, so it has access to urban services, but also we have a problem of uh, architecture and design of the buildings that can be really improved. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I, scale pro uh, I scale program uh, bring us speed, which is good, but the speed bring us padronization, and it's a problem. And it, this is the one thing that we're, we're working with the sector. So working with the, the, the with architects, with engineers, with the constructors, to, to how the, 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 the design of the buildings
can be uh, can be better without uh, reducing the the speed and the costs of the the of these projects. So um, I think this is the, the the main and the sustainability of the infrastructure here. Uh, we have like uh, sanitation is uh, uh, public, uh, not public. Sorry, it's uh, it's public and private. It depends on the, the the decision of the municipality too. So, but most of them, the, most of the sanitation in Brazil is public companies or uh, states public companies. So we have some laws that uh, that that says that in, in the low-income territories it pays social fees. So it's it's really it's really low uh, comparing to the other uh, uh, to the other parts. So the the, the, the parts of the, the the bigger incomes kind of subsides the the, the maintenance of this uh, these ones that are paying less. But I don't know. Um, some of the questions here because our time is is flow is really going fast. Um, let me see. We have here some question like Nancy Cordoli asked, "Who owns the lands? And if it, uh, the land ownership was an issue to the upgrade, uh, who owns the land?" I already answered, but the the land ownership is an issue to the upgrade. So sometimes we have some new instruments uh, of the law to to benefit uh, land tenure. So we have like a, a, a framework that are, has been building uh, over 20 years here in Brazil about uh, how the people who who is living in the, the land has to have rights such as the ones who owns this but didn't took care of it so most of the some most of the, the, the slums are in the public areas but some of the slums are in the private areas so normally these private areas we have uh, if it's over 20 years we have instruments that can uh, take the owner out so he, he, he didn't took care of his uh, his land for over 20 years so he's not uh, he's not going to benefit from it so it's what it's in a, in a framework that we call uh, the social function of the the, the, the land and uh, we have as a, a, a result of all islam upgrading that the the, the 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 regularization so it has to be in the name of the family uh, let me see another question uh, Kay Hoffman asked, uh, asked, your example shows on millions per dollar per housing unit. How can this be sustainable? How do you cost recovery? Uh, no, the, the, it's not millions of dollars per unit. Uh, the, 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 here it's like, it's around $30,000 uh, 30, a unit and it's about 20, 25 to 20 for the lower income class thousand uh, dollars are subsided uh, it's not uh, told the sustainability of this is that the, the 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 country is really in a in a good economy process now so that we can uh, uh, we can afford this kind of uh, of, of um, we can uh, this kind of subsided nowadays, but it was not always not, not always like that. So that's why these lumps are there. So we, we didn't have the sufficient investments in in, in housing. So we know that uh, we have to bring more of the markets here to this. So we have to be decreasing these subsided. But we we consider this a process. So we don't have to, to if we, the state doesn't come now and do, uh, uh, it works, the, the market wasn't, wasn't working. So the subsidies are low, are, are high, so it can go to the lower income classes. Um, oh, and he said, sorry, I have to correct myself. It's about a hundred times US dollar per unit. It's still too expensive. Uh, it's about 50. It's it's uh, 
it's half, but it's still expensive. I agree with you. Um, the uh, Alessandra, the cost per family of the upgrading is about ten thousand dollars for each of the fifty families. It depends. We have a really different. It depends on the type of slums. It was a, a question by Victor Ver, Victor Vergara. It depends. Uh, our costs goes from uh, twenty thousand uh, uh, dollars to five thousand dollars. Depends on the region and on the type of slums we are dealing with. So in the north, that it's basically a problem of infrastructure, but we don't doesn't have to do a lot of resettlement because it's not too dense. Uh, the costs go down. If uh, we are dealing with the really dense slums, like in São Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, the, uh, the, these costs that we have to, to resettle a lot of people, we are talking about uh, slums in, in mountains, in hills, these ones that has a, another type of technology so we can do sanitation and everything, we are talking about uh, 25, 20 to 25 thousand dollars per family. It's, it's, uh, it's expensive, it's more expensive depending on the region and on the type of slums. Um, let me see another question. Some of them, I'm sorry, I, I'm not uh, finding the question again. Ask it, uh, what we do in a community when it has a, a community of unemployees. Uh, again, uh, a, a unemployed, uh, an employee was a, a really big issue in Brazil, especially uh, in the 80s and still in the 90s, but now we are not, uh, this is not the main problem of our economy. We have a, a rate of employee, of employer, of employee really high, so even if it's not a formal employee, uh, uh, we have a, 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 uh, an informal employee, but that has some income. So, uh, but even though we have uh, an equal, we have people with really low income, so that it can uh, support uh, condominium, it can support light, water, and everything that a formal house brings. But uh, that's why the social works is a, 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 a main guide and the, the, what we consider the, the, the axis of a sustainability, sustainability to the program. So we have, uh, we have programs of capacitation, we have uh, how to, to, to put these people in the formal work. We have a lot of works, uh, of social works that are doing parallel to the, to the, to the intervention, to the, the sanitation works, to the house works. So we, we, we consider this side by side. So in the end, it's the sustainability that we look for. Um, uh, Hene Holman asked uh, Alessandra, to what extent has the federalist system of Brazil contributed to the successful institutionalization of nationwide upgrading schemes? What role in this regard has the Council of Cities? Well, the, the federalism for us, it's, uh, it brings us scale. Because if it was only the federal government uh, acting, probably we would we have over uh, uh, we have around like as shown like a thousand uh, uh, slums being upgrading at the same time. If it was only one structure, the federal one doing it, probably we wouldn't reach this uh, uh, this scale. And as we have a, a really big a really big uh, um, uh, country, we have really different situations from north to south. So the municipality, when it does the, the upgrading, it can bring us the reality, it can bring us the, the real issues for that population that here from Brasilia we can see. You know, so uh, the federalism in the Islam upgradation, for us, uh, it's a good thing in terms of uh, uh, go closer to the population and to the different areas of Brazil. But it has uh, 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 another problem that uh, even when we have a lot of investments from the federal government, 
uh, some municipalities doesn't have the institutional development uh, to uh, act actually implement all these resources. And actually, some of the, our guidelines are not totally observed. So we see the, 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 the matters, the problems in the, the end of the, of the intervention. So it's for good and for worse. Um, let me see another question. Shadan uh, de Oscar. Does the program target large cities or small, medium cities? Other national programs in other countries have been criticized for a bias towards larger cities. Well, we we have our our big investments in the where like we are, I shown a graphic that goes regionally in and it's based on the data of where the slums are concentrated. So our investments are concentrated in the big cities because the slums are concentrated in the big cities here in Brazil. So in the the, the small cities. We have other problems, normally in the small cities, is not exactly what we consider Islam. Normally, it's an infrastructure matter. So we have, uh, Paki has investments, really big investments in sanitation, in water, in sewer, in drain. So uh, these uh, sanitations has special uh, and other, uh, other types, uh, others uh, priority type, priorities, how to invest. In, in the territory. We invest most of our investments, not uh, that we don't uh, attend the small cities, but most of our investments are in the big cities because the slums are in the big cities in Brazil. Mm. Francesco, no, let me see. Alessandra? Okay, I think we're going out of time. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much, Lissandra. Um, sorry, everyone, we, we could not accommodate all the questions because we're running out of time. We have six minutes left. Um, yeah, so just to conclude this session, um, thank you very much, Alessandra. Thank you very much for the very um, wonderful, very interesting presentation. Um, and just, just, to, just to synthesize, um, basically, Alessandra was talking about uh, important things. Now, one is, um, the policy instruments they, they made in Brazil, which is very important, one is creating the, the enabling um, government agencies, not like the uh, Ministry of Cities. Second, also um, the national housing policy. And she was also talking about the statute of the city. So these are very important um, 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 when we're trying to learn how to address um, informal settlements. One is the policy instruments. And Alessandra also talked about uh, coordinated efforts, no? Uh, between the federal and the local governments and not just that but also the different sectors uh, different government agencies because if you notice the PAC favela was a multi um, multi-sectoral approach it wasn't just addressing land and housing it was also addressing many different things like um, the social aspects livelihood etc uh, Alessandra also we uh, interestingly talked about the twin track of Brazil. One is the reactive program, the, the slum upgrading program, which responds to, to the current scenario already. And two is the proactive one, which is trying to prevent the formation of slums. And I think that's a good strategy to have a twin track approach. Um, so basically, we don't have more time. With that, again, I would like to thank Alisa. time out of her very busy schedule to share with us Brazil's well-recognized successful experience. Let me also take this opportunity to thank Andre for providing very meaningful comments. And of course, thank you to all who participated in our webinar. Uh, the presentation will be made available on the E-Institute site. Um, I think it's flashed on your screen and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll look we will see everyone again in the next webinar.